Good morning students. In the last class, we have discussed about few aspects of reproduction. There we have discussed about asexual mode of reproduction as well as vegetative propagation. Now in this session, we shall discuss about much more concept of reproduction which includes sexual reproduction in flowering plants, reproduction how it takes place in human beings and regarding reproductive health and we are also discuss about sexually transmitted diseases in this session. So first we shall look into how the sexual reproduction will take place in flowering plants. We know that flowers are the reproductive part of the plants. When the flower starts bearing, we say that the plants are in the mode of reproduction. So then what actually the meaning of flower then? Flower is a condensed shoot which is specialized to carry out a sexual reproduction. If you look into the structural part of the flower, the flower bears a stalk which is known as pedicel and there is a broad base called as thalamus. Now this thalamus will have four major parts of the flower or four orals which are known as sepals, petals, stamen and carpel. You can see the image of the flower where I told all the parts are mentioned here. Now in this, sepals and petals do not have any involvement in the process of sexual reproduction. That's why they are referred as what we call non-essential parts of the flowers. Whereas stamen and carpal have direct involvement in the process of reproduction, so they are referred as essential parts of the flower because they are the male and the female part of the flower. Coming to the each part of the flower in detail now, sepals. We know that sepals are the outermost part of the flower which are green leaf-like structure. It protects the flower in the bud condition. Petals, they are the brightly colored structures above the sepals and they attract the insects for the process of what we call pollination. You can see another important image of the flower here. Stamens, as I told, they are the male part of the flower. So when you look into each uh, stamen in the flower, it contains two important components. One is known as the filament, another one is known as the anther. The filament is in the form of a slender stalk-like structures and on the terminal part of the stalk, or this filament, there is a knob-like structure which is swelling in nature which is known as anther. Now this anther contains a pollen sacs which contains the male gamete known as the pollen grains. We can see that one in the image. Another important part of the flower which is called as a female reproductive part which is known as carpel. Each carpel when you observe it has three important components. One is known as the ovary, style as well as stigma. Ovary is present in the basal part which is swollen, you can see in the image and then we have another important stalk like structure from the ovary which is known as a style and in the terminal part of the style there is a receptive portion which is known as stigma. Now this stigma is going to provide an attachment for the germination of the pollen grains during pollination and this stigma is almost sticky in nature and whenever the pollen grains falls on it, it sticks. So that is the structure of what we call carpel here. So both stamen and carpel are a very important part of the flower, which is referred as essential part of the flower. Next, based on the presence of this particular reproductive organs, the flowers are categorized into two important types. One is known as unisexual flowers, another one is bisexual flowers. What are unisexual flowers? Flowers which contain only one reproductive part, it may either contain pistil or it may contain carpel. So based on this, we say that it is a unisexual flower. Any one reproductive part is present, then we call them as unisexual flowers. Example you can quote for these flowers are papaya flower, watermelon flower, datura can give a lot of examples. Bisexual flowers are the flowers which contains both reproductive parts, that is both male and female. And the examples you can give for this category is hibiscus, mustard, etc. Now you can see the image of the unisexual flowers as well as the bisexual flowers. And even you can see the example corn, cucumber also given example for unisexual, rose, petunia also other examples for bisexual flowers. Next important part of the process in the plant is once they attain the reproduction stage, during that particular process, another important event which is going to be happen is the pollination. What is this pollination? Pollination is nothing but a transfer of pollen grains from anther to stigma. This poll pollination is of two categories. One is a self-pollination, another one is cross-pollination. 
सेल्फ पॉलिनेशन मीन्स अ ट्रांसफर ऑफ पोलन ग्रेन्स फ्रॉम एंथर टू स्टिकमा आइडर इट मे बी इन द सेम फ्लेवर और जेनेटिकली सिमिलर सेम फ्लावर विच इज अफर्ड एज सेल्फ पॉलिनेशन वेर एज क्रॉस पॉलिनेशन मीन्स द पोलन ग्रेन्स विल ट्रांसफर फ्रॉम एंथर टू स्टिकमा ऑफ अ डिफरेंट फ्लावर इज नोन एज क्रॉस पॉलिनेशन and self pollination does not require any agents whereas cross pollination requires agents like wind water insects etc and one more thing you have to remember here is self pollination does not create any variations it create a very less variations whereas cross pollination creates more variations which leads to the evolution of different varieties of plants in nature this you can see the image of pollination which can take place either in the same flower or it may be in the different flower next the very important process that happens after the pollination is what we call fertilization so what is fertilization fertilization is nothing but a fusion of male and female gametes so once the pollination occurs so after the pollination what happens the pollen grains falls on the stigma as soon as the pollen grains falls onto the stigma what happens the pollen grain starts absorbing the water and the nutrients by producing what we call a pollen tube so the pollen tube gets germinate and this pollen tube will pass to the ovary through what we call style the tip of the ovary contains a tube nucleus and two male gametes that you can see in the picture here one male gamete now start fusing with the egg to form the zygote and simultaneously the second male gamete will fuses with the two polar nuclei forming endosperm so we have to observe here carefully children the two important fusion is going to take place two type times uh, fusion that is going to take place here one time the male gamete will fuses with the egg to form the zygote and second time the male gamete fuses with the two polar nuclei forming the endosperm because of the two fusion here the process is referred as what we call double fertilization and this process of fusion of second male gamete with the binucleate central cell or two polar nuclei is known as triple fusion by this process the sepals and the petals shed off and the after the process of fertilization ovary develops into fruit and ovule develops into seed now coming to the structure of seed here what actually the seed contains seed is a ripened ovule it is surrounded by two seed coat which is an outer layer as well as the inner layer the outer layer is very tough and inner layer is very thin the outer layer is referred as a testa and the inner layer is known as a tegmen the whole is referred as what we call interior part is known as embryo now this embryo has a short embryo axis so in the middle of this axis there will be two large broad yellow colored structure you are seeing in the image which is known as cotyledons now this cotyledons contain a reserved food material there is a structure called as hilum occurs near the pointed end and there is a small micropyle occurs between the hilum and the pointed end so tip of the embryo axis towards the micropylar end is known as radical which shows the root system and the other end of the embryo axis is known as a plumule which develops into a stem part now with this we have completed the sexual mode of reproduction how it is going to take place in angiospermic plants now let us move on to the reproduction process how happens in case of human beings now in the human beings we know that we are referred as unisexual animals that means we are showing a sexual dimorphism which means we can see a separate sexes in the case of human beings so we call them as unisexual animals so every organism will reproduce by sexually in case of animals but the ability for the sexual reproduction will appears late before the actual process of sexual reproduction lot of changes is going to be happen in both men and women so those changes which are going to take place and that particular stage is referred as what we call puberty or is also referred as adolescence this stage occurs at the age of 10 to 14 years in the girls and about in 13 to 14 years in case of boys that is the beginning stage of the puberty during this particular time the primary sex organs starts work and they also secrete certain chemical substances which are referred as hormones those primary sex organs in male is referred as testes and in female it is known as ovaries 
So both the organs start functioning by producing the respective gametes as well as hormones. There are certain other sex organs also start functioning during that particular time, which are which is going to be nourish the gametes, and we call those organs as secondary sex organs. Example for those are fallopian tube, uterus, vasa deferensia, prostate gland, seminal vesicles, etc. Now, there are certain characters. which are going to be distinguished from male and female at the time of the puberty and we call those characters as what we call secondary sexual characters and these secondary sexual characters are under the influence of hormones and example for those are breast in females beard in males etc now as we know in order to perform the entire process of reproduction the two important systems should play a very important role one is called as a male reproductive system another one is known as female reproductive system now let us look into those organs of male and female reproductive system in the humans and how these organs plays a very important role here if you look into the male reproductive system it contains a pair of testes vasa afferensia a pair of epididymis seminal vesicles prostate gland and penis so these organs will together perform the function of reproduction in males let us move on to the each part now testis testis is referred as a primary sex organ which is a male reproductive organ in the producing a male sex cell known as sperms and also it secretes the male sex hormone known as testosterone now this testis lies in the two chamber pouch of loose skin outside the body referred as scrotum which act as a thermoregulator because it maintains a temperature of around 1 to 3 degrees celsius and this lower temperature favors for the development of sperms next structure is epididymis each testis will open into a long coiled tube of 4 to 6 meter length is known as vasa afferensia is also known as epididymis this organ helps in storing the sperms also provides nourishment to the sperms next is vasa deferensia is also known as sperm duct that is vasa afferensia what we have discussed before now it is vasa deferensia now this vasa deferensia or sperm duct what it will do epididymis what we have discussed in the previous structure will opens into a thick muscular tube known as this vasa deferensia or sperm duct now it receives the ducts of seminal vesicle to form the ejaculatory duct now another important structure is seminal vesicle seminal vesicle are the pair of glands which is going to produce about 60 to 70% of the semen which is thick milk in nature and they have certain secretions that provide nourishment and stimulates the sperms now the question arises in your mind what actually the meaning of semen semen is a milky alkaline fluid which is ejaculated by the males during orgasm and this semen contains 300 to 400 million sperms now next is the prostate gland again it is another important single large gland that occurs at the area of the union of urethra and ejaculatory ducts here the secretions which are produced by this gland are also thick milky in nature and it also contains some chemicals and that is essential for the motility of the sperms then the finally the last structure is the penis which is known as the male erectile copulatory organ which helps in the transfer of sperms into the vagina of the female reproductive tract so this is how the different parts of the human reproductive system plays a very important role in the process of reproduction next we shall look into the structure of sperm we know that sperm is the male sex cell which is produced by the testis now look at the structure of the sperm here the sperm contains the three important components one is known as the head component middle piece and tail you are seeing in the picture now this head contains the genetic material which is in the form of dna and also contains a nucleus it contains a cap like structure known as acrosome which helps for the penetrating the egg the tail helps the sperms to move towards the female germ cell and the middle piece 
provides energy for this moment because it contains the mitochondria. Next coming to the female reproductive system. This includes a pair of ovaries, a pair of fallopian tubes, uterus and vagina. Ovaries, once again, is a female reproductive part of the human beings. It contains a female sex cell, which is known as ovum or egg. At the same time, it also produces the hormones like estrogen and progesterone. Fallopian tube is also referred as what we call oviduct. It is the area which actually undergoes a process of fertilization. The process of fertilization in the human female system is it takes place in the fallopian tube. It is a curved shaped tube. The next is the uterus, which is also known as the womb. It is a muscular thick bag-like organ which nourishes the fetus during the pregnancy. The internal lining of this uterus is known as endometrium which is highly rich with the blood vessels. Next is the vagina as a female copulatory organ where the sperms get fused or sperms get entered and it is also referred as the birth canal as well as it is a passage way for the menstrual flow. The next important event that happens is the fertilization. So we know that the fertilization is a process of a fusion of male and the female gamete. And this happens in the ampulla part of the fallopian tube in the female reproductive tract. So when this male and the female gametes get fused, that is known as the resultant one is known as zygote. Now what happens next? That is very important. The, after the formation of zygote, the zygote undergoes a multiple cleavage or what we can say a series of cell division to form what we call a ball of cells which is known as morulla. Very important, remember here, morulla stage. Now, this morulla will enter into the uterus, that is what we call womb, by seventh day during the pregnancy time. By this time, the morulla gets transformed into embryo. We call that particular stage as embryo. And embryo again later converts into blastocyst. So, when they come to the blastocyst stage, it develops some finger-like projections called villi because it fixes to the uterine wall by a process called implantation. Now, the embryo completely gets contact with a spongy disc-shaped tissue called as placenta. So, placenta here is a, plays a very important role because it is going to provide a protection to the embryo. It gives nourishment to the embryo. It also removes certain unwanted things from the embryo. It also helps in the process of respiration by providing the oxygen gas. Now, next is this embryo after the, the connection with the placenta, it gets transformed into a fully developed structure which is known as fetus. Now, this fetus gets an attachment to the placenta by means of an umbilical cord. Now, this total period of embryonic development, we call them as gestation period. In human beings, it is about 270 or 280 days. After this 270 or 280 days is over, the mature fetus is going to be delivered. Then that act of delivering is known as parturition. So, to summarize the process of fertilization, the development what we see here is the zygote will convert into embryo and embryo gets converted into fetus. This is what we see the different stages in the development of a baby. You can see the image here which shows the different stages as I already explained now, the morula stage, the blastula, the implantations, everything you can see in this particular image. Now, before, now just now we have discussed about the fertilization. So, when the egg fuses with the sperm, then only we can say the process of fertilization which leads to a process called pregnancy. Suppose, if the fertilization does not happen, what actually next one? The next is nothing but the menstrual cycle. This starts at the age of puberty in case of females. It is a series of cyclic changes that occur in the reproductive system of the human females with the periodicity of about 28 days. What happens during this particular thing? If the fusion does not take place in the absence of fertilization, the lining of this uterus breaks down, which is known as endometrium, breaks down slowly and comes out of vagina along with the blood with the mucus. And this process is known as menstruation, which lasts for about 3 to 5 days. Now, this menstrual cycle begins with at the stage of puberty, as I told. 
The first menstruation is referred as menarche and the stops between the age of 45 to 50 years and that process of stoppage of menstruation is known as menopause. Next, the very important part is known as reproductive health. So, to attain the process of reproduction, everyone should take care about this health conscious. So, what is the meaning of this reproductive health then? This is a state of a physical, mental and the social fitness to lead a responsible, a safe and satisfying reproductive life. So, by developing this reproductive health, one can develop an awareness regarding the fertility regulating methods. One can have a knowledge of about reduction in the number of children and also they can get prevention from sexually transmitted diseases. A very important thing is we have to reduce the limit of size of the family. So how to go for that? So this can be done by regulating certain methods. So what are those methods we can follow to control this particular family planning? So those are mechanical methods or barrier methods, intrauterine contraceptive devices, hormonal method of contraception, chemical method of contraception and reversible sterilization. So all these methods is mainly responsible for preventing unwanted pregnancies and these methods will prevent from sexually transmitted diseases and also responsible for the development of uh, family planning. So this process of preventing the unwanted pregnancy is what we call contraception and the techniques what we are using for this is known as contraceptive devices. So what I already mentioned now. Now let us come to the contraceptive method in detail one by one. First we shall look into the mechanical method or barrier method of contraception. So this method will prevent the entry of the sperm into the uterus. This can be done by using the condoms, cervical cap or contraceptive diaphragm. So by using any of these methods, we can prevent the entry of the sperm entering into the uterus. So cervical cap is normally wear over the cervix. Diaphragm is also going to be fit inside the vagina. And condoms, as we know, can be used in the form of a sheet or it can also be used in the form of oral pills. Next is the intrauterine contraceptive devices, commonly known as IOCDS. These are the devices which are made by using the plastic or by using the metal or by the combination of both and that can be inserted into the uterus which prevent the insemination so that it can prevent the sperms not to enter into the fallopian tube. The most common type of the UCD is the copper T and this method will function for about 3 to 5 years. Next is the hormonal method. This also another important way of preventing the unwanted pregnancy so by taking what we call the oral pills or by administering what we call the hormone called FSH hormone which suppresses the production of ova. Next is the chemical method. This also another method where it is going to kill the sperms during the time of the coitus. Example we can use with creams or jellies which are placed over the vagina and so that they can kill the sperm so that there is no fusion of the gametes. Next, the important uh, surgical technique method is the reversible sterilization. So, reversible sterilization includes the two types which is known as vasectomy and tubectomy. So, both can be done in a respective males and the females which suppress the development of the um, sperms as well as the ova. Vasectomy, what they will do? Here, the vasa differentia are blocked by cutting a small piece and tying the rest and tubectomy is going to be here also the fallopian tube is going to be blocked and ligated which blocks the passage of ovum and vasectomy will prevent the entry of sperms both are referred as surgical techniques now next important term we have to identify is what we call safe sex what is a safe sex it is a sexual activity that engaged in the people 
who have taken the precautions to protect themselves against sexually transmitted diseases. Safe sex avoids the sex with multiple partners and unknown partners. It uses the barrier or mechanical method that avoids the coming contact of the body fluids. Now let us move on to the sexually transmitted diseases. They are the group of diseases or infections caused by a different type of the pathogens that are transmitted by the sexual contact between a healthy person and an infected person. Now let us see certain sexually transmitted diseases with their symptoms. Some of the sexually transmitted diseases are gonorrhea, syphilis, genital warts and AIDS. Among the four, the gonorrhea and syphilis <coughs> are caused by bacteria, genital warts and AIDS are caused by virus. Gonorrhea is caused by a bacterial pathogen known as Neisseria gonorrhea and this causes the symptoms of a pain around the genitalia, burning sensation during urination. The treatment for this is amphicillin. Syphilis is another important bacterial disease caused by a pathogen called Tryponema pallidum which causes the painless ulcer on genitalia, swelling of lymph glands, etc. The medicinal treatment for this is tetracycline. Genital warts is caused by the viral pathogen known as human papilloma virus, commonly known as HPV. Here we can see the hard outgrowths called the warts which appear on the external genitalia. And the method here is cryosurgery. And very important, commonly aware of that is AIDS which is known as Acquired Immunodeficiency Syndrome and the pathogen name is HIV that is Human Immunodeficiency Virus and the major symptom of this particular disease is the immunity getting reduced and there is no proper treatment for this disease. So student with this we have completed the chapter of reproduction in detail. In the next session we shall meet with a new chapter Till then, bye, stay safe and stay healthy.